more and more school districts dealing with less and less state funding. So what can be done to fix the state's funding of education? Hi, I'm Tonya Caruso. Welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. And joining us right now is State Senator Matt Smith. Thank you for joining us. Great to be with you. So really, I guess that the crust of this issue is education is not funded equally throughout the states. Not all students have the same opportunity. Yeah, that's exactly right. In Pennsylvania, we have a, a unique challenge. Over the last four years, we've seen significant cuts to public education funding to the tune of a, about a billion dollars. So you have that problem on one side of it. You have the lack of funding across the state. And then that problem is exacerbated by the fact that we have, as you said, inequitable funding throughout Pennsylvania in that we're one of only three states that uh, does not have a, an equitable and fair funding formula that sets out exactly what every school district will receive in a certain year and maybe even just as important why they'll receive that funding. Um, so we that leads to inequitable distribution, it leads to a lack of transparency and really a lack of fairness where not all students in Pennsylvania are being afforded the same opportunity at success. And it turns out that students who are already disadvantaged tend to be the ones then that are underfunded in their districts and so it just perpetuates the problem. It, it does, it hits in various ways. As you said, um, districts that have a high poverty rate um, are hit very hard uh, in this context. Districts that have a high growth rate, um, so high student population growth, uh, are also hit very hard because you have districts, particularly in, in my Senate district, that are really high growth school districts, adding population, but they're not receiving uh, the same increases in education investment to correspond to that increased student population. So the formula right now, um, you know, really across the board is very detrimental. And I think there's a recognition that the system is broken and the Basic Education Funding Commission is, is here to try and address the problem. Right, so brand new commission? Brand new Tell commission, it was, it was formed by uh, Act 51 of 2014 uh, last year, as, as last year's budget. Uh, I was appointed on July 24th of this year. I'm the only member uh, from Allegheny and Washington County um, on the commission and the commission is charged with coming up with a set of recommendations whereby we can implement a fair funding formula to fund all school districts in Pennsylvania. Our report is due to be uh, submitted to the General Assembly by June 10th of 2015. So we've had uh, about 10 hearings throughout the state uh, thus far. We'll continue to have hearings over the next six months. And I think there's a real opportunity in a bipartisan way to come to some consensus on finding a formula uh, that addresses some of these problems. Right, and so uh, you touched on this bipartisan so folks from both sides of the aisle and from across the state as well. Across the state, both sides of the aisle, from the General Assembly, an equal number of Republicans as Democratic uh, elected officials, and then the new administration, Governor-elect Wolf's administration, will have a chance uh, through the, so their Secretary of Education and Secretary of Budget to put their stamp on it as well. So, you know, really, we're forced to work in a bipartisan way. I think that's what the public wants us to do. Uh, that's the right thing to do. And, and on an issue this big, where we're talking about uh, every student in Pennsylvania being impacted, we need to make sure that we're coming to some consensus uh, with a formula that does address these issues, that is fair, that is equitable, that makes sure that every student has the opportunity to succeed in Pennsylvania with that education investment. Have you guys investigated, is there any place that's doing it right around the country? Yeah, that's a great point. There are a lot of school districts and then schools within those school districts that are doing a great job of, of educating children. Um, and it doesn't necessarily in and of itself always correspond to the ones that are receiving the most money. So there is a, a set of best practices that we're looking at that maybe can be tailored for other school districts where we know uh, X, Y, and Z is particularly successful in a, in a school district. Yeah, well, so much to talk about. Do come back and update on us on this and we'll talk about some other issues as well. Thanks for your time. Thank you. I'm Tonya Caruso. Thanks for watching Comcast Newsmakers. We'll see you next time.